warm good evening to each and every one attending today's webinar and we are extremely happy to present this 12th panel discussion this is the uh, under today's uh, panel discussion but this is the 12th under the expert lecture series that we have hosted for this 2021 and uh, it is encompassing the theme of UN Sustainable Development. The series is being organized in collaboration with Rajasthan Council for Educational Education and Management, WCPA, World Constitution Parliament Association, Earth Constitution Institute, USA, CCEAM, Commonwealth Council for Educational Administration and Management, Indian Affiliates, Swami Keshanan, Rajasthan Agricultural University, Bikani, International Forum for Global Social Justice, Education and Empowerment, and Srimati K.B. Dave College of Education, Kelvai, North Gujarat University of Gujarat. Today's panel discussion topic is Human Rights Education for Global Peace. And we have our extremely seasoned panelist today, and the chairperson of which is none other than our intellectually bright and academically active Professor Hemlata Talisra ma'am. So a brief about Professor Talisra ma'am. Ma'am is presently working as director in Srimati K.B. Dave College of Education, Pilwai, North Gujarat University. And she's expert in education, including teaching, writing, research, and administration. An eminent educationist, CCEAM fellow, board member and Indian representative of Commonwealth Council of Educational Administration and Management and chairman RCEAM. She has received Lifetime Achievement Award instituted by CCM Commonwealth Education and Peace Award, John Delvey Award, Saldar Patel Education Development and Peace Award, Gujarat Goro Award to add more to these for her outstanding contribution in education. Professor, Professor Talesra Ma'am has completed research projects under the auspices of Commonwealth Foundation, London, UGC, ERIC, NCRT, ML Verma Tribal Research and Training Institute, and IASE. 20 candidates have received their PhD degree under her guidance. More than 35 publications in book form in the capacity of authoring, co-authoring, and editing books on different important educational subjects. So ma'am has also uh, has to accredit hundred more than 100 papers that have been published in international and national journals. She has visited, to my surprise, really, I too was shocked. She has visited more than 55 countries for yeah. delivering keynote addresses, lectures, paper presentation, and has attended CCMA board meetings. And our distinguished panelists for today's discussion are Dr. Usha Shri Guha, ma'am, an IES government patent developer and educationist from Nagpur. Dr. Kishori Das, ma'am, former principal, Dr. PM IASE Sambalpur, and former associate professor, CTE Raul Kela. Dr. Rajeshwari K, Principal, Institute of Advanced Study in Education, Trishur, Kerala, and Dr. Chandravati Joshi, who is Associate Professor, BA Department, MB Government, PG College, Haldwani, Uttarakhand. So, with the panel discussion, Professor Himlata Talisra, ma'am, would be heading this. And once this panel discussion would be over, we will have 50 to 60 minutes of this panel discussion in which each speaker would be deliberating upon the assigned topics for five to six minutes. And after that, 30 minutes would be for the open discussion. So once again, I welcome you all on board. And I now feel great pleasure to hand over this panel discussion to Professor Himlata Talisra, ma'am. Over to you, respected ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Sima. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, learned scholars and learned panel team members. 
the most important way to impart peace education is primarily through education of human rights to promote peace education understanding acceptance and friendship among all peoples nations is need to strengthen respect of human rights and human freedom peace education and human rights are gaining popularity among society organizations and government agencies also recognizes the importance of such education however with growing recognition there are increasing consensus over both the broader objectives and specificities of carrying out peace education programs the main objective of this panel discussion is to discuss the ideas and develop awareness about peace education and human rights a great deal of emphasis is currently being placed upon peace education throughout the world and it is a worldwide movement and continuously changing field responding to develop in the world society peace is a comprehensive action that requires a transformation in our thinking sense of social values resources and harmony of all it's one of the four values of life the three other values are truth love and moral conduct so now i request the first panelist who is very learned she is ias dr usha si gua ias and certain development of different countries and government of india and also an educationalist so many activities she is doing so many activities related to education related to law and the other aspects also so over to dr usha si gua dr gua yes thank you very much dr ahmedata talesla <coughs> who is the guiding light for all of us and i really am honored that the panel is so learned and all the participants i shouldn't say participants but all my learned fellow uh, uh, peer group is so learned that i fail to uh, get words to address you friends all of us know about human rights i'll first talk about human rights then human rights education and now as there is a degree course which is known as human rights human rights and duties education but as dr chaudhasia who was the one of the pioneers of human rights education in india under whom we are the proud scholars Dr. M. Lata Talisra and Dr. Kishori Das and me, we have learned so much from Dr. Chaudhary. In the beginning, it was we who never believed that how human rights education can establish peace. We used to think that this is a part of education only. But then, through projects, through practice, it was it was not through teaching, through reading, through volunteering. we came to know that how important is human rights education this is you know the human rights education is a little different from human rights concept of human rights itself it is an extended form human rights education is the education or it is the training or it is gaining the information to promote values beliefs and attitudes and encourage everyone to protect their rights in case there is some infringement or conflict between two countries conflict between two or many more countries where peace has been infringed there how human rights education can play an important role that i am going to 
maybe discuss with all of you. Friends, if I talk about how human rights education would help, what are its indicators? It reminds me of the real instance of a Guatemala farmer, a farmer in Guatemala who was in his 60s. He was asked, do you know human rights? He said, yes, yes, I know human rights. I'm talking about a farmer in Guatemala. He says, yes, yes, I know about human rights. The definition has been told to me in 1940. Then uh, after that, then 2000. But then what I'm more concerned about is my own wife is sick. I don't have money to spend for her medicine. And the place is ravaged with enemies. I can't even go to a shop. There is no social security. There is no health security. And other things are not available to me. So I don't bother whether anybody has human rights or not because the definitions that has been told to me cannot be applied in my this situation. The only answer that comes to people like you and me is that don't misunderstand human rights as a tool to achieve a standard of well-being. Human rights won't come and give you money in the pocket. But human rights is a broader concept. Only thing that was unfortunate about the farmer is in what manner he was told about human rights. He was only given the definition of human rights. But had he been given a human rights education and had there been a methodology to give a proper human rights education, he would have known that in this situation, instead of grumbling, instead of being negative, <coughs> he, can, he should know to go to which NGO. Because after all, even in the case of conflict, there are NGOs who are working, there are other governments who are working, there are global agencies who are working. The farmer did not know all these things. That means he did not have human rights education in the proper sense. So human rights education, it is like one who has information or one who has training, who, can, who knows how to go, who can change the attitude, who can encourage him to be positive and thereby promoting a peaceful, peaceful family. If a family is peaceful, the community becomes peaceful and then the wider thing is that society is happy. Now, one of the important indicators of human rights education is methodology by which the education should be given. The responsibility of imparting how the human rights education should be given, the responsibility remains with us. We call ourselves that we are educated. In that case, we should take up the project which can give proper information to the right person who know how to handle the cases. How to remain peaceful. Learning to learn, learning to know learning to be. This is the need of 21st century. When it is learning to be, it is like a development of an attitude which can really develop an attitude which can really contribute to a peaceful world or conflict resolution. Friends, now the time is running out, but I want to show you one of the Mm. I was uh, just trying to show you that which are the countries which are most peaceful and why they are peaceful. And why means whether the reason is connected anywhere with human rights education. Yes, Iceland is supposed to be the most peaceful country. Why it is peaceful? Yes, people are more than uh, uh, less than learned, but they have developed an attitude to conflict, to resolve their own conflict. 
and conflict resolution it starts from educational institutions schools communities and that is how the whole community and the society becomes peaceful they never allow their own children to become a leftist or join a party such that that will have grow the attitude of attacking others then i'm talking about the bigger countries usa uk canada then for that reason even japan all these countries they have their human rights issues i have jotted down some of the human rights issues in japan though they have their own law and they don't much think about attacking others but their children in the school they develop an attitude of working hard of development and of a peaceful world here what is the project what is the key point with japan japan says japan has introduced a curriculum in which they have a subject of history and that subject teaches not of hatred not of giving big speeches they talk about more of development and it is the methodology how a teacher infuses and pours the knowledge and thus develops the attitude we in education we should be able to understand hre because we understand that there are three phases three chambers in our brain and development of that is known as real education when it is the cognitive part that means give the information which are correct which add to the values number two second chamber is development of attitude develop the attitude in school community teachers home and the third one is how that can be really implemented and in reality how it is practiced that means elders when they practice they talk they debate that reflects that peaceful world leads to development and conflict leads to destruction and that is how a country remains peaceful peaceful it is not that when some countries that are king afghanistan and afghanistan at this point of conflict what to did do with hre human rights education not that we have seen there are projects where the college students are asking for workshops people like hemlata ma'am and all of you you may be browsing where the afghanistan college students secondary school students they are asking for workshops which will train them to know at to know what is human rights and where to go for it and how united nations is helping only through various various uh, countries i have very little time but i want to give at the closing of 2021 because only after two days it will be 2022 united nations has have given few very correct since my uh, my ye cannot be projected i'm just giving through my paper that despite the challenges that we are uh, shouldering united nation has given some kind of positive uh, positive report that has come taking on climatic change this year united nation human rights council adopt, adopted two landmark resolutions on environment additionally there is a lawsuit and germany's supreme court has ordered the government to set clear targets to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases after 2030 that means this will be prohibited so united nation has given some positive uh, positive agenda and positive ruling to observe such that climate change issues are uh, possible second one by united nation is systematic racism in us and beyond in united state the today also the highest or the most dreadful uh, human rights infringement is racism it is known as systematic racism it is a complete social problem but united nations has given a warning there is a bill and the bill is named in the house of resolutions and it would establish a federal commission to study the legacy of slavery in us and develop proposals to repair the damage 
Third one, that United Nations have given acceptance of gender diversity. Even in India, uh, gender diversity is a dreadful issue. Fourth issue is fight against child marriage. Fifth issue is brave Indonesian women discuss freedom to choose what to wear, hijab or what to wear. This is also one human rights issue, but the United Nations has taken a, a big part into it, like we have our sustainable development. We all can choose one, one project. We don't have to go to the situation, but we can write papers, give resolutions, give uh, uh, sort of uh, suggestions so that it is taken up. The sixth issue is 10 years of global domestic workers' rights. Now domestic workers, Nokrania, they are on the roads. So for them, caregivers, housekeepers, for them also, there is a treaty. There is a treaty made by United Nations, which you see to it. Now, again, the funds for COVID-19 vaccines, UK national food strategy, protecting children in schools. Information about the above mentioned points should be known to the stakeholders. We all should have information and disseminate it to the people who would, who you feel that they can cause some kind of clashes and disturb the peace building. So there is a direct relationship between human rights education and peace building such that in a proper manner, if human rights education can be imbibed in the country's youth and those who are in war making, because war is waged in minds, not on the war fields. So first, the mind has to be properly, the attitude has to be properly trained such that the mind does not feel fiery to attack others. So with this, my last small uh, my last small, uh, uh, what do I say, prayer to him, Lata Madam, and to all my learned friends is that we can certainly take up small, small projects on small, small areas which would cause, which would cause peace building throughout the world. May it be in any area, domestic violence or any child marriage or any other area. Thank you very much. If there is any question, you are open and with, uh, with the permission of Dr. Last. 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 Yes, I am there till last. So, Thank you very much for the patient hearing. This is what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Yeah. Rushasi. Um, very nice lecture and the declaration. And also uh, about the different countries' vision about human rights. Uh, peace has been defined as a dynamic, participative, long-term process based on worldwide values and everyday life part practices. So peace is not a specific condition of life. It is the central driving idea behind the most active dynamism. The key values of peace is based on the belief to promote life in positive relations with others and with the environment. This implies the need to further maintain and develop hope, spirituality, and optimism, a sense of belonging in local, national, and global community. Cooperative and peace relations with others and a sense of shared destiny. And in this context, I want to remember Mrs. Sushiraji Chaurasia. She was very much active in uh, human rights education to provide human rights education to end with Dr. Chaurasia. And Dr. Chaurasia and Sushilaji both, Sushilaji was the first uh, uh, postmaster general, uh, lady general, lady postmaster general, and both were working a lot in human rights education and now i request our second panelist <coughs> dr Kishori das former principal with dr pm iasc sambalpur and former associate professor city 
Raurkela, and despite of his severe pain on his throat, Dr. Kisori is speaking. So please take care of you and in short, you present only just just of your uh, thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Nidhi. Respected chairperson, honorable dignitaries, my dear friends, I want to share something. That's why I'm here. Although I'm advised my, by my physician to not to talk for more than two minutes, but there are something which needs to be uh, which needs to be shared because my presentation will be of different type. Uh, my elder sister Usasiji has already told about what human rights is, what is human rights education, and she has told him more. She has elaboratedly, uh, she has already presented many things. I am not touching that thing. Mine is few questions arose in my mind because my presentation is human rights education for world peace in the context of sustainable development. Here, three things are very important. Human rights education, world peace, and sustainable development. Few questions arose in my mind like this, that what is true human rights? What are those human rights education? What is sustainable development? Why sustainable development is so important? How all this is connected with sustainable development? And how can human rights education contribute to world peace? Since long, we are trying to achieve the goal of human rights. And everybody knows that the entire world is facing the critical result of pandemic and facing the crisis of various types of problems starting from sociological to economic and personal, emotional, so many things. I'm not touching that one, but one thing, I think human rights, what human rights is, or what are those? Those rights which are considered invisible, interdependent, and inalienable, without which a person ceases to be a human. When we are talking about this human right concept, to me, I used to give stress on the green rights. Uh, there have been three generations of human rights. Three generations of human rights. One is blue right. One is blue right. The first generation was the legacy of the French Revolution are called blue rights, which gave civil and political rights to the humanity. And the second generations were a legacy of the socialist revolution and independence movement, which is called the red lights, red rights, and they have given political, economic, and social rights to humanity. But my consideration, my submission is the third one, that is the green right. The third generations are called green rights, which speaks of the rights to development, rights to peace, and rights to cultural solidarity. I'll be confining to this only. Because to me, all the rights are categorized in four angles. That is right to live, right to work and development, <laughs> right to, sorry, right to education and information, then right to work and development, then right to friendship, peace and harmony. The entire rights are categorized in four angles. And this right to live, when we are talking about right to live, have we ever seen the life of the transgender? 
it is a great question mark according to the 99 sorry 2011 census 4.9 millions are found to be the transgenders and their literacy rate is found to be less than 50% and in between 10 years have passed one decade has passed and about 10 millions are found to be our transgender are they getting their rights a big question mark when we are talking about rights when we are talking about development when we are talking about about world peace these three things are the three angles of the triangle and the three angles are interrelated interconnected without human right education the peace cannot cannot be achieved because we know that this human rights the un was formed out of the ss of the war in 1945 putting respect for human rights alongside peace security and development as primary objectives and the universal declaration of hr um, udhr was also adopted in 1948 as a continuation of that obligation which provided a framework for the series of international interpersonal humanist and, and convention since then we are trying our level best and we are trying to develop our people in all respect but development true development sustainable development when we are talking about sustainable development sustainable development what is this sustainable development it is a development which embraces economy and society and human induces environmental changes which are intimately connected and mostly resulted in negative changes in i can say sd or sustainable development it is a balance between environment society and development that is economic development i'm talking to ensure the safety security and prosperity and happiness of human being without compromising without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs if we are not going to compromise and we are thinking for the future it's well and good but have we ever discussed about the development of the discriminated people have we ever gone through the true educational development of this country i am talking about india because bhuke bhajana na hota gopala there is a saying in hindi bhuke bhajana na hota gopala those who are hungry they cannot do worship they cannot do bhajan and those who are discriminated they cannot live in peace and they cannot allow the people to live in peace they create problems everywhere because discrimination is made at different stages and human rights education is the only solution you cannot say that only solution it is a step ahead to provide not only information what already ushashi guha ji have already told so i am not touching that but still it is a process to help the people to think about human rights and think for human rights it is about and for unless and until we will think for others and we will be aware of human rights and we will will be aware about ourselves but we will not be aware about others this process cannot be worked out now we are thinking about the development of <clears throat> now we are thinking about the development of different type of <coughs> we are thinking mm -hmm. about different type of development a country's development true development sustainable development is impossible without the participation of all types of people all types of people 
one category of people one category of people if they will be taking uh, the responsibility then that will not be happened one type of people cannot help it is global peace world peace can be achieved only when there is a true development set off i had been to sweden and norway during my visit i met some people and one old lady of 90 she was talking like that that when i asked her she was our guide and when i asked her that how is your life here she told me she answered me that we are fantastic we are leading a peaceful life she was more than 90 and i have recorded everything we are fantastic we pay our tax in time and our education is free up to class 10 a country must decide about the education of each and every individual of that particular country there should not be any discrimination in the form of education what happens to india we have not yet got a framework of all type uniformity of education is still a dream those who are the children of rickshaw mm-hmm. puller they are going to municipal school those who are the people of those who are the student or children of um, a good family rich family they are going to public schools Well, they are going to high five schools, and what happens? They are they are find they are start the discrimination. Life. There is no question of a balance sheet in education. Human right education it provides a picture, a value system. It is a value, and that value system has to be developed. So, friends, due to <coughs> I am not feeling well to say. Okay, okay, okay. My 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 submission before the house is that we should think about the green rights. We should think about the green rights of the people, where there should not be any discrimination. And I have thought of one thing that step to be taken for world peace. That is, we should try to. breach the gulf between have and have nots to the maximum overnight we cannot do it but from the very beginning if we'll give training to our children at least they should be sympathetic our children should be empathetic to the people those who are discriminated we should try to avoid the discrimination at our own level and only making principle making policies are not sufficient specifically a country like india it is not possible to follow all those things because i am giving one example i was selected i, I should have been a professor in education from the year 9 2013 and my right my right i was discriminated against because not me people like me they have not got the professorship and now we have filed the case against the government and some other people they have got the professorship if it is happened with the elite mass like us you can imagine about others government is not able to give justice because there is a question of political will political will and our policies are interlinked so friends taking care of discrimination and inequality should be our priority we should share out wealth or share out wealth fairly your amanis are there adanis are there and at the same time people are there those who are not getting food so government should take care of all those things when we are talking about human rights these things are to be taken much care so that peace can be achieved automatically tackling to tackle the climate change due to climate change and due to political change everything has been happened then control arms sales we are talking about arms we are talking about peace but selling of arms is going on so that is another uh, reason so that should be strictly controlled then display less make over policy changes protect political space then we should fix intergenerational relations 
intergenerational relationship should be established and uh, start by stamping out exclusion and bring out true equality between women, men and transgender. Only we are talking about men and women. Why not transgenders? Recent and surprisingly, one statistics I would like to give <coughs> that recently government has uh, given a scope to uh, transfer an amount of 1,500 in the accounts of transgenders after this pandemic. <coughs> but how many have got it? Have you ever known? Application were made for 1,915. <coughs> rejected, applications were rejected to 20. And cards issued for 277. And case is pending still one and a half year, that is 1,411. And 85% of the transgender, they claim that they don't have their own accounts. If it is happened in our country, then you can imagine about the world. So friends, we should not remain silent. Rather, we should start building an integrated peace movement. We should look within. And wherever we are, we should not remain silent. We must make the people aware about peace education, about <coughs> sustainable development, and about human rights education. We should be cautious about our own right and we right and duties, and we should be cautious about the rights and duties of others. Whenever there is in, uh, discrepancy, we should raise our voice, and we must make the public aware. Government, who is the government? We are the government. We are, the, we are sending the representative. So if we will only think and we will see that the government will make the policies, no way. We will be doing the job of the catalytic agent. We will be doing the job of not social worker, as personal family members. And wherever there is inequality, wherever there is discri uh, discrimination, we, we must our voice and we should try to sort out the problem so that we can think for the peace because peace cannot be achieved without development true development development cannot be happened without exercising true rights and responsibility because rights and responsibilities both are the two sides of the same coin only to avail the right is not sufficient or only to performing duty is also not right. So both the things should be taken care. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm unable to express more because no, no, of okay, my- Okay, okay, Dr. Kishori, please take care of you and give rest you. to Thank your you throat. Much. Give rest Thank you very much. to your throat because <laughs> the doctor prescribed you <clears throat> for rest. So thank My you very thanks much goes to everyone for your uh, um, views. And the United Nations declared the decade from 2001 to 2010 as an international decade for culture of peace and non violence in the world. And this includes respecting all lives, ending of violence, and teaching non violence alternatives through education dialogue and cooperation. So now I request the third panelist. She is here, Dr. Rajeshwari K, Principal, the Institute of Advanced Study in Education, Trisur, Kerala. Dr. Rajeshwari is very active and educationalist and doing a lot of work related to education, related to teacher training, and related to social justice also. So her topic is uh, human rights education for promoting peace values among students. So over to Dr. Rajeshwari. 
a very warm good good evening to all very respected hemalata ma'am kushashi ma'am kishori ma'am my uh, uh, the and all other respected dignitaries at the outset i actually appreciate the efforts taken by talesra ma'am for organizing a discussion on human rights education we all know that human rights can be those basic standards without which people cannot live in dignity as human beings human rights are the foundation of freedom justice and peace and their respect allows the individual and the community to fully develop we have two deliberations by kishori ma'am and ushashi ma'am and we have we got a birds eye view on the concept of human rights education the development of human rights has its in the struggle for freedom and equality everywhere in the world the basis of human rights what are the basis such as the respect for human life and human dignity can be found in most religions and philosophies whether the philosophies are modern or ancient the basis of human rights deals with respect for human life and human dignity so they are proclaimed in the universal declaration of human rights there are different characteristics of human rights we all know that human rights are inherent to each individual human rights are universal that means they are the same for all human beings regardless of race sex religion political or any nation anybody of any national or social origin <laughs> then human rights cannot be taken away no one has the right to deprive another person of them for any reason people still have human rights even when the laws of their countries do not recognize them or when they violate them for example when slavery is practiced slaves still have rights even though these rights are being violated and we know that we all are enjoying rights again the human rights they are indivisible and interdependent this itself implies that one set of rights cannot be enjoyed fully without the other that means if our social or civil human rights are violated it will impact other rights as well as uh, um, that is about political or cultural human rights then the human rights are equal and non discriminatory as all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights so we know that we cannot even give priority over others even though we are our society is actually giving priority to some person based on the caste creed social status etc but according to human rights no such priority is given to anybody everybody has the right to enjoy everything then the categories of human rights we know that human rights can be put into mainly three categories they are liberty oriented security oriented environmental cultural and developmental rights oriented liberty oriented means civil and political rights they are also termed as first generation rights and these are they include the rights to life lie rights to liberty and security of the individual freedom from torture and slavery political participation freedom of opinion freedom of expression thought conscience freedom of religion all all these are coming under liberty oriented human rights these are our rights 
then security oriented economic and social rights that is the right to work right to education again we have the right to have a reasonable standard of living with food shelter and health care so all these are our rights we are also enjoying such rights then environmental cultural and developmental rights they include the rights to live in an environment that is clean and protected from destruction should be clean should be hygienic and they gain rights to cultural political and economic development we have the rights and this we are enjoying liberty oriented human rights security oriented human rights and environmental cultural and developmental rights in addition to the different types of human rights then we we that is we are actually dealing with the promotion of peace through human rights awareness how we are able to maintain peace we should have an awareness that means the students in educational institutions students should have an awareness on human rights the different types social or civil human rights they are right to life liberty security right to freedom from slavery right to freedom from torture freedom from cruelty freedom from degrading treatment or punishment these are actually coming under human rights right to freedom from torture we know that students are being tortured in different aspects including atrocities and abuses then racial discrimination they are actually being tortured then gender discrimination is there torturing so we have to provide awareness on the different aspects of human rights that in social or what are what all human rights are coming under social or civic human rights political human rights economic human rights cultural human rights etc so they they have the they have to be or we have to create awareness on the right to freedom from torture cruelty punishment again from arbitrary inference with privacy home or family right to marry right to have family right to have property all these are our rights <clears throat> whether he is a slave he is also have to enjoy these rights then political human rights include right to nationality right to equality before the law law equal every in front of everybody law is equal no racial discrimination or religious discrimination or social discrimination is there equal protection of law, law is to be availed then right to judicial remedies freedom from arbitrary arrest right to freedom of thought freedom of expression freedom of belief conscience right to freedom of peaceful association or assembly right to take part in government affairs right to equal movement freedom to move right of asylum all these are the coming under political human rights under cultural human rights protect different cultures customs traditions right to participate in cultural life of the community festivals religious festivals cultural art enjoy the art and to share in the scientific advancement and its benefits right to the protection of the moral and material interest right to a social and international order all these are our rights and the students are to be made aware of their rights what are their rights so in india the human rights the constitution of india incorporates most of the rights enumerated in the udhr already mentioned by the ma'am in two parts they are the fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy 
And fundamental rights, Article 12 to 35 of the Indian Constitution guarantees the right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, and right to freedom of religion, and so many other things. Protection of Human Rights Act is also there. Human rights education is all about helping people to develop to the point where they understand human rights and where they feel that they are important and should be respected and defended. Human rights education is education about human rights as well as for human rights. That should be the type of education to be imparted about human rights, creating awareness and also for human rights. That is teaching people about international law or about human rights violations and teaching people how to respect and protect rights. Respect and protect rights are also very important, like getting awareness on different rights. Then children need to taught rights. That is a thing. While we want to promote peace, teaching human rights is positive, not negative. That also we know. Human rights make students better able to participate in society and in the politics. But we know that peace is also very important. Through human rights awareness, we have to maintain peace and order in the society. For that, what we have to do? For that, while we are making, aware, making the children aware of human rights, they are to be made aware of their duties and responsibilities also. They have to know about their rights, but they also have to know about their duties and responsibilities. So the need for peace education is the fact that humanity faces challenges of unprecedented proportion due to the development itself and the tremendous development in science and technology. We know that the continued development of weapons of mass destruction, conflicts between the states, ethnic groups, the spread of racism, community violence, Again, the wide gap between rich and poor throughout the globalized economy, massive violation of human rights, degradation of the environment. Now we are actually facing the consequences of all these aspects. So in order to be equipped to tackle these complex and interwoven problems, the coming generation needs a radically different education. For that, we have to adopt innovative strategies, approaches, and methods. So the need for peace education is greater than ever before with a holistic approach. For what? To get credibility, status, and accountability. So peace education is more relevant in view of the recent terrorist attacks. We are actually, we have noticed many terrorist attack so what is actually the attitude behind that the inspiration behind that all these we have to think about and spread the human rights education in an effective way the most appropriate route to impart peace education is through education of human rights to promote peace education Understanding, acceptance, and friendship are very essential. Um, right, human rights can be defined as the basic standards without which people cannot live in dignity. I have already mentioned. So the basis of human rights, such as respect for human life and human dignity, can be found everywhere. So the students need the skills to create and maintain peace. Educational institutions have to provide opportunities or the educationists act as mentors in 
maintaining peace or getting idea about peace and peace education so the methodology of peace education encourages critical thinking and preparing students to act on their own convictions hence again we know that there is no magical approach to peace education it will evolve and grow only through practice the peace education can be imparted by considering different methodologies which include creating a supportive classroom investing conflict violation and peace visioning peaceful futures we can have many peaceful peace value models teachers can adopt such peace value models designed by many of the researchers then creating a supportive classroom is very essential according to the principles of peace pedagogy pupils can learn how to bring peace to the world not only by studying the issues of war and peace but also by learning skills and behaviors the dispositions from classroom climate which is established by the teacher himself or herself there are many variety of practical approaches to create supportive classroom environment that is we have to provide activities encourage cooperative attitude cooperative learning environment or activities building knowledge where student involvement will be maximum <laughs> so practicing peace can be promoted through classroom activities that encourage self esteem trust cooperation empathy assertiveness appreciation etc and we know that life skill education can provide much for this purpose often we know that critical pedagogy critical curriculum all this will support peace education connections among young people's activities laws to limit gun ownership by citizen we know that nowadays even though we are not able to own gun but many of them uh, many are uh, many have guns that can be limited many violence are actually arousing because of keeping guns with the students or youngsters so learning to make a life a la that means a life that is beneficial useful and peaceful that is to be the outcome of education we have seen that there are different pillars of education and the last two learning to be learning to live and learning to live together why shouldn't we practice that in a cooperative collaborative way definitely we can maintain peace because many adjustment mechanisms will develop un unknowingly among students after all we know that humans are social animals and their success in life is largely matter of successful social relationships so we have to provide opportunities for students we have to arrange activities we have to enable students to organize activities <laughs> workshops seminars so that they can develop peace and harmony they will get an idea about rights and values community improvement as well as the overall development of a particular country so peace peace education encompasses the key concepts of education and peace so a comprehensive education in human rights not only provide knowledge about human rights and the mechanisms that protect them but also imparts the skill needed to promote defend and apply human rights in daily life which will enable individuals to <laughs> maintain peace by equality values and rights in the center of a successfully functioning society so let us hope the best because peace education is a diverse field that includes the theoretical research and practical activities of experts from many disciplines assembled in a 
number of professional and research association so for the culture of peace or become established it is necessary to accept the principle of uniqueness in diversity and to establish the social norms of respect dignity and the rights of every individual so let us hope the best for creating awareness on human rights simultaneously among students they should be made aware of their duties and responsibility <laughs> let us hope the best thank you thank you very much thank you dr rajeshwari nice uh, views and the universal declaration of human rights also declares that human rights are universal and to be enjoyed by all people no matter who they are or where they live so thank you very much for your uh, knowledgeable views and now the last panelist dr chandravati is here dr chandravati yes ma'am yes, yes associate yes yes associate professor ba department mb government pg college haldwani nenital and she speaks on human rights and the 2030 agenda for sustainable development so over to chandravati thank you ma'am yes yeah. for giving me an opportunity to present my views in this uh, means i'll say it's a global platform for me and thank you ma'am and uh, all the experts are here i have uh, i have heard them very uh, attentively and, uh, and the topic uh, the topic which has given to me it's relevant for it it's a, for today's scenario that is human right and the 2030 as a for sustainable as uh, the, we are starting from the beginning that human rights are very important for existing our and human rights are <clears throat> it's a uh, we always say that human rights are a pre requisite for development and democracy and the need for uh, the need of promoting and protecting all human rights is very important for all of the means the uh, human who are living and in order to secure full and un uh, universal enjoyment of these rights cannot be fulfilled uh, at all without mass awareness i'll say and uh, without uh, mass uh, where and sensit sensitivity to human rights issue with the adoption of the 2000, uh, 2030 agenda uh, world leaders unprecedentedly committed to a coherent and comprehensive global agenda for sustainable development we have organized a lot of seminar on this in this vir virtual platform uh, in a schools level and uh, organize higher education level Uh, marvelous international processes and decisions and needs the environmental social and economic dimensions that contribute sustainable development um, and uh, in september uh, we all know we have discussed earlier that uh, the un generally assembly uh, unanimously adopted the 2030 agenda uh, uh, for sustainable development and the 2030 uh, agenda provides a comprehensive and a universal framework for all, for the global platform and uniting the environmental social and economic dimensions of sustainable development first of all i would like to uh, focus on the 2030 agenda comprised you all know that the three main elements are there we are talking uh, relating to it human rights and the 17 sustainable development uh, developmental goals that uh, 169 targets to be achieved we have to think over it that 169 targets to to be achieved by the all countries by 2030 there are 169 uh, targets are there it's a very very comprehensive task for all of us that uh, we all know that no poverty zero hunger good health and well being is there quality education should be uh, focused 
and clean water sanitation we are talking we are discussing about it and gender equality we all know it's a very important it's a very relevant for the uh, for existing uh, the life and um, affordable and clean energy should be there decent work and economic growth industry innovations and infrastructure should be focused uh, reduced inequalities inequalities which is uh, means uh, existing in our society and sustainable cities and communities we want and responsible consumption and production climate action should be there ufe low water ufe on land peace justice and strong institutions should be uh, focused and it should be means well furnished and partnership for the goals the means i'll say that the means of implementation that uh, which we are discussing which specify the resources and partnerships that are necessary to reach the agreed goals and targets in order to guide implementation three main questions need to be answered what are these three questions these three questions are ki what are the concrete linkages between human rights and the agenda 2030 human rights and the agenda 2030 are interwoven the 2030 agenda for sustainable development is grounded in human rights we all know and the 17 sdg directly or indirectly reflect human rights standards now the second question which is very important what are the next steps for human rights institutions and mechanism to contribute to the re uh, realization of the 2030 agenda that means this question arises in our mind all over the time that how means what will be the ne next step uh, what we are going to do and the third one is that how can the 2030 agenda most effectively contribute to the realization of human rights so we have there are three questions which are very relevant which are very important and uh, uh, in the in the follow up is that and review say process review process and mechanism that will monitor and guide the implementation and including the global <clears throat> indicators framework i'll say the overall purpose of uh, this uh, means uh, that uh, we are talking here mechanism is to ma uh, maximize and track progress in implementing the 2030 agenda and its 17 sdgs as disease and ensure that no one is left behind the principles i'll say of uh, this uh, that is accountability is there very important and party participation must be there and non discrimination when we dis I mean when we will discriminate in in 21st century in present scenario that will it not going to be uh, means uh, fulfilled i would say or are at the core of the human rights based approach it's uh, to develop uh, that mechanism should it should comprises what are the means elements which what are the steps should be comprises in this mechanism when, when we are talking when we are discussing with each other and we are taking views and we uh, means we are uh, survey uh, we are doing survey all over the country and all over the world we are, i'll say so it will uh, it is going it is going on but we have to think over it very uh, deeply and if uh, uh, that our accommodations and that educationists should think and give the solutions give the, uh, the they they have to do task uh, over it promote respect first of all that uh, it should comprise pr promote respect for human rights and accountability to citizens we always say this uh, point and have a particular focus on vulnerable groups and those farthest behind ensure inclusion that is very important ensure inclusion without it it is not possible and participation it's very uh, it is very urgent it's very essential and transparency should be there if there is no transparency only that uh, you hum hindi mein kehte na ki matlab uh, ek theoretical framework to taiyar ho jata hai hamara we have theoretical framework but actual mein practicality mein kya ho raha hai ground level par kya ho raha we doesn't we don't know about it what actually is going there to ye nahi hona chahiye and ye it's not i'm not talking about the in perspective of that sustainable development means it's a system of our Uh, i'll say uh, uh, in the uh, in our country that uh, means uh, everything is going to be no it's not uh, means i'll say it's not real it's aisa lagta hai is cheeze vastav mein ho nahi rahi hai 
ये बस कही जा रही है केवल दिखाई जा रही है एक्चुअल में क्या हो रहा है कि ये हमें अभी तक इसका इसके कारण ही शायद हमें लगता है कि कहीं ना कहीं पीछे रह जाते हैं हर काम में हमारी पॉलिसीज बहुत बनती है हमारे मीन्स बहुत से चीजों को हम लेकर आते हैं लेकिन कहाँ पर वो वो चीज हमें उस लेबल पर नहीं दिखाई देती है और जो कि हमारे पॉलिसी मेकर्स की टेबल में वो चीज होती है तो वी हैव टू थिंक अबाउट इट कि ये चीज हो चुकी है लेकिन वो एक्चुअल में नहीं हुई है तो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड जनरेट डेटा विच इज हाईली क्वालिटी एक्सेसिबल आई से दैट आई एम फोकसिंग ऑन इट कि जनरेट डेटा विच इज विच शुड बी क्वालिटेटिव इन द सेंस मीन्स वहां पर वर्क हुआ हो कार्य हुआ हो उस जगह पर तो ऐसा डेटा हमारे पास होना चाहिए डेटा ये नहीं कि हमने इंक्लूड कर लिया डेटा अपने ओवरऑल अपना उसका एक मीन्स एक रिटर्न में डेटा कलेक्ट कर लिया नो इट्स नॉट लाइक दिस एंड हाईली हाई क्वालिटी एक्सेसिबल टाइमली रिलायबल होना चाहिए एंड दिस दिस जनरेटेड बाई इनकम टैक्स एज रेस आई से एथनिसिटी शुड बी माइग्रेशन स्टेटस होना चाहिए डिसेबिलिटी एंड जियोग्राफिक लोकेशन एंड अदर करेक्टरिस्टिक्स रेलिवेंट इन नेशनल कॉन्टेक्स की अगर मैं बात करती हूँ एंड इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एट द यूनाइटेड नेशन ह्यूमन राइट काउंसिल इज द मेन बॉडी विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर ह्यूमन राइट्स इन द यूनाइटेड नेशन सिस्टम एंड इट्स मैकेनिज्म कैन प्रोवाइड अ सब्सटेंशियल कंट्रीब्यूशन to the understanding of and dialogue on human rights and sustainable development uh, so i'll say that thereby the 2030 is in the constitute a framework for uh, establishing a new comprehensive dialogue and a framework for coherent action it should be uh, all over my views which i have uh, written in a form of write up also here तो दैट ये ये टॉपिक इट्स अ वेरी मींस वी हैव टू थिंक ओवर इट वेरी इन इन डेप्थ then only we can come out with the result of this and not only thinking processes there we should we have to do work uh, means ground level uh, and collect relevant data then i'll say that we we are you know sabka saath sabka vikas ki jo hum baat karte hain माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी तो देन इट इट विल बी पॉसिबल अदरवाइज अदरवाइज आई थिंक इट विल बी मीनिंग इट विल नॉट बी मीनिंगफुल सो थैंक्स टू ऑल द थैंक्स डॉक्टर चंद्रावती जोशी रियली द ह्यूमन राइट्स आर द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट कंपोनेंट फॉर सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट एम्पावर ऑल सिटीजन्स ऑफ द अर्थ to think in theme terms of principle of unity diversity mutual respect and tolerance with the framework of effective global democracy the new paradigm of sustainable development establishes linkages across poverty elevation human rights and peace to conclude human rights education is helping to build strong and successful societies with respect all and law uh, under the rule of law all states and countries of their people uh, and justice thank you very much